Yeah, so I think we can start. Um, good morning. So good morning, everybody. And um, welcome to the third edition of the workshop, Long-Term Human Emotion Prediction, as part of the IEEE ICRA 2021 program. Also this year, as you can see, the workshop will be held online uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation. My name is Luigi Palmieri and on behalf of the co-organizers, I'm going to give you just a short introduction to this workshop. Let me first talk about motivation. Let me uh, first introduce you the reason why we think we need as community to meet up and talk share and then understand uh, the latest trends in the context of human motion prediction. Prediction is per se a key tool for the safe and robust operation of autonomous systems, such as uh, robots navigating in intralogistic settings or automated driving, autonomous driving systems or human robot collaboration systems. As we will see later on during the, the invited speakers talks of this workshop, we have uh, different forms of prediction, right? Um, so for instance, classical trajectory forecasting where we can uh, forecast, predict the agent human or car position into D, 3D positions, or maybe we are interested in a uh, full uh, 3D pose like skeleton of a human and so on. Also, prediction can also take the form of uh, action and intentions predictions, right? Where we are not interested in the actual punctual position or pose of a human or of a car, but we are more interested um, to see uh, if this pedestrian or this car is actually, uh, you know, crossing a street, moving in a particular direction. And also, as we will see uh, later on, uh, we have a nice, interesting new field where uh, more context, uh, more semantic understanding is included inside our prediction systems. Um, yeah, and this resulting in more accurate, but also uh, more uh, informed uh, decision making in the, the downstream, downstream tasks. All those methods share similar common challenges. For instance, stochasticity of our environment, right? Um, irrational actions of this environment, of the agents in these environments, like uh, pedestrians can suddenly change the, uh, the, the way of moving, right? Uh, and often uh, those agents, uh, pedestrians of cars, they have complex dynamics which are not so easy to model by hand. One usually tries to learn uh, those, but also the learning, uh, the learned models are not always 100% correct, of course. Uh, we have agents which can have different dynamics, can be very, um, so highly ag agile, they have a, a, a high agility, like they, as I said, they can be quite irrational, change directions from an instant to another instant. And also the behavior of these agents is actually dependent on the environment, on the context. So pedestrians will behave in a particular way when they are in, a, in the office, and then they behave in, a, in another, uh, in a different way if they are in in uh, a, a train station, in an uh, uh, airport uh, um, uh, gate. And also their behavior is highly dependent on the interactions between uh, different agents, so different pedestrians uh, or pedestrian car, or also uh, interaction with the, an environment. When we think about the grasping, um, how do we behave if we have some particular objects with some particular properties? And of course, it also depends on ego attributes and preferences like uh, elderly people, uh, people will move in a particular way, young people will, part, uh, will move in, other, in another way. During this workshop, we asked our invited speakers also to focus on um, uh, failure cases, on current open challenges and uh, pain points. And essentially with them, and also with you all in the audience, we will try to ask the to ask ourselves and then to try uh, answers uh, for those to the, to the following questions: Can we always trust our predictions? What if we, if we uh, misinterpret them? How can we prevent rare events with large losses? Right. And here, let me recall an interesting uh, metaphor related to to this topic. 
which is the mythological tale of Cassandra from the Greek mythology. Cassandra was loved by the god Apollo, uh, who promised there the power of uh, prophecy, right? The perfect prediction. If and only if she would comply with the, the, his desires. Cassandra the initially accepted the proposal, received the gift, but then ran away. Apollo was really upset for that, and therefore uh, he ordered that all the men will never believe uh, her prophecies. That is why during the Troy War, she has predicted that Troy will be destroyed, but nobody was listening to her. And that's why uh, this resulted in Troy being completely burned uh, burn down and completely destroyed. So again, there was a perfect prediction, but in, uh, nobody really uh, understood it. Nobody really trusted it. Therefore, had, uh, we had a large loss. We should perhaps ask ourselves when we build our system, can we, do we always trust our prediction or how shall, shall we manage those predictions in our downstream tasks? Let me now start to give you some details about the organization. And I'll start by um, talking about the organizers. Um, so as I said myself, Luigi Pandieri from Bosch Research. Um, if you are there, maybe uh, you can also speak up. Uh, I'm saying, um, telling this to the other organizers. So Andrei Rudenko should be there, right? From Bosch yeah, Research. hi everyone. Thanks, thanks. Then Andrea Baxi, she's from Berkeley. I think she's not there because in the West Coast it's quite late now, but she will be joining us in the in the. Session. I actually saw her in the list of uh, uh, participants, I think. Maybe she's still here. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe okay. not anymore. <laughs> then Akim Lilienthal, he, uh, he was there before. Maybe Hello, you know. good, good morning from uh, Sweden. Hi. Alex Salai, also there, right? Good morning from Switzerland. And Kai Aras, not sure if you already joined the meeting, also from Bosch Research. Uh, we also wish to give now a big thank you to the program committee members, which helped us in uh, finalizing the workshop program and also helping uh, helped us in the, uh, in the review of the submitted papers. A big thank you from all of us. During this workshop, we will also have the Trajanet++ ICRA 2021 challenge. Uh, at least we will see the results obtained during this challenge. And again, also from our side, a big thank you to Parth Kotari from EPFL and Sven Kreis from EPFL that helped in setting up this, this challenge. We are really curious to see the results uh, uh, later on. Uh, again, for thanking, uh, we, we wish to thank uh, the European publicly funded projects which supported this uh, workshop, Iliad and Darko, and also the technical committees which have uh, uh, been supporting uh, our workshop proposal. Thanks again. Let me now start to give you more details about the program. This year was a bit difficult uh, to find a nice plan schedule for uh, for all the invited speakers because we were not uh, everybody in, a, in a, let's say in a single continent we are spread over the world that's why we have now two different sessions an initial session today uh, in this morning and the second session later in the afternoon evening at european time so today we have the first session which is more focused towards human robot collaboration manipulation and collaborative uh, assembly uh, and later on, at the end of this first session, we start uh, uh, on the Trajanet++ prediction challenge uh, results for robot navigation system. The second session is more about navigation. So we have uh, talks coming from a classical, let's say, wheel mobile robot, robot navigation. Uh, but then we also have two talks uh, regarding autonomous driving. And uh, at the end of, of, the, uh, of the second session, we also have a paper spotlight presentations. In the year, we have uh, uh, two workshops, we accepted four papers. This is the list of the papers. And as you can see, each paper will be presented later in the second phase of the, uh, of the workshop. I'm finishing here just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, so invited talks, um, uh, they will be lasting 30 minutes in total, where we say to have 25 minutes talk plus five minutes Q&A. If you have questions, please write them in the chat or simply raise your hand. 
videos of the talks will be recorded. Please uh, make sure to turn off your cameras and mute your mics. Thank you. And uh, yeah, more information uh, will be uh, on uh, will be found on our website. So with this, I complete my introduction, and uh, maybe we can start now to introduce the, the next speaker, right?